Hey, what's up everyone? Be the installer here, my lovely wife, Jen. Hi. We're gonna discuss the 77 inch Samsung S95C QD OLED. We're gonna go over some of the features. Jen's gonna ask some relevant questions that people have had in comments and that she might have, and then gonna give you some buying advice toward the end. So let's get right into it, sound good? It sounds good, I'm gonna channel my inner Barbara Walters. All right, <laughs> so this is the first 77 inch QD OLED to market. Sony's gonna have their A95L, which will be similar. It is a QD OLED TV as well, but they'll have two different models, but the Samsung one has come out first. So I'm new to this, I help unbox them, but like, tell me what is a QD OLED? Okay, QD OLED is quantum dot OLED, which is a little different from traditional OLED. Traditional OLED went from all three colors to white to all three colors and then it would also add a white subpixel. So it's kind of weird in that a lot of energy was wasted with traditional OLED where with this just has all blue light and then it changes from green or red through a quantum dot layer that kind of changes the light. So it's like with this, the bright blue light changing to the other two colors just creates a very bright and beautiful image. Still pixel level control, still in my opinion, better than like backlit TVs that have blooming, but that's kind of the difference. Okay, I kind of understand that, yeah, but. You know, Samsung Display took a lot of time and effort to show us over the last couple of years, the difference between QD OLED and OLED. So I got to see behind the scenes and I'm not very technical myself, but it did help, you know, so we got a lot of that information out of the way. So what I'm getting is there's a rainbow and then Ant-Man comes into play and then he changes the colors. Maybe not all that, but uh, it's pretty impressive. I like QD OLED, fantastic. Okay, so second gen, what's the difference this year from last year? Okay, well, first of all, the 77 inch version is probably the main difference. Most people were excited for the regular first generation QD OLED, 65, 55 inch, awesome, but you know, bigger and better like we do on this channel. All right, Caesar's getting a little nervous, so we had to bring him up too. So 77 inch version, probably the main difference, but in addition, it's brighter this year. So it's going to be brighter. The blue is gonna be more efficient. And they showed us this at CES. Blue brighter, then it's brighter different colors, right? So if you're having, you're starting with a you know, brighter back layer, then it's gonna be brighter in general. It's gonna be more efficient as well. So you're gonna be able to get brighter with less energy usage, which is good for like the EU and some you know, different standards that they're coming out with in order to be eco-friendly. And then lastly is the durability. It's supposed to be twice as durable as last year. You know, I don't know how that equates, but some people had issues with, you know, the panel's strength or, you know, if it maybe it's, means burning in the future. And we have some other things to talk about that. So, you know, brighter, bigger, more durable, eco-friendly, a lot of benefits. Yeah. So if you're going to spend the money on a new TV, I mean, more efficient sounds better, brighter, more efficient, you know, more Definitely. durable. Definitely. Cool. Maybe this question's for you. How did you like that package on that 77 inch TV? Yeah, I mean, it was a pretty well-packaged TV. I liked it because it was pretty eco-friendly. There wasn't a whole lot of printing or anything like that, extra pieces on the box, um, just really efficient. On the inside, there was a good bit of styrofoam, but one thing that I really like is it had that nice bubble spot, like right on the top, like that wide bubble area that really keeps the screen nice and secure. Um, so I thought that was really good. Overall, I thought it was packaged nicely and it arrived you know, with no issues, which has not been the case in the past for so a couple times. A nice protected package, we mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And of course, you know, I love pulling the film. So there was plenty of film for me to pull. Yeah, I don't know why all companies don't do that. I, I believe Sony doesn't do that where they don't have the plastic to pull. They just have like a little wrap over it. But having the actual peel, it's just nice because, you know, it's satisfying. You don't want to have your, well, it's satisfying, but you don't want to have your screen all jacked up before you even get it on display. So in the comments section, there was a comment from Scott Bryan. He said that he ordered two of these TVs and they were slightly warped. Do you want to comment about any of that? Any feedback? Yeah, yeah. I mean, to the durability issue, this is kind of a negative. I mean, the TV was warped down the middle a little bit from looking on the end. It is a 77 inch TV, so it's a very large TV. To be fair, there was no performance issues. There's no issues. It's just an aesthetic thing. It was a very mild observation. And secondly, a lot of the traditional OLEDs are warped as well, and they're even thinner. And the A90J from Sony had a lot of bubble in the actual front screen. So if you'd shine a light and kind of look at it at an angle, you'd see that curve in it. And there was no performance issues with those either. So. You know, I think it's fine. It was just something that I observed when unboxing and I don't think it's an issue. I'm not sure if Scott had an issue that I think he took them back, but I don't think it's something you would take a TV back for if it's just slightly curved, unless you're putting it tight against the wall and it's curving out on the sides and you know, you didn't buy a curved TV. So that yeah. may be an issue. So you said Sony's got their own QD OLED, um, but 
I thought I heard you say that Samsung has two coming out. Is that? That is correct. Oh. So the one that we have is the S95C. Okay. And currently they only have a 77 inch, but they're gonna have a 65 and a 55 inch. And this looks more like an 8K QLED TV from the past where it's a little thicker all the way through and it has the One Connect box. We know we like the One Connect box, yeah. right? So it makes it easier because all the attachments are, you know, down in the cabinet or you can connect it to the back or on the stand. And it has speakers on the back and just has a more premium look to it. So that's the top one. Then they're going to have the S90C, which is going to be more like the last year's version of the S95B. And these numbers can be confusing, but it looks more like a regular OLED where it's a very thin screen, even thinner than this at top. But the, you know, it's got more of a, more junk in the trunk down at the bottom because you got all the connections and the HDMIs all in the TV. So that would be good if you have like HDMIs and power outlets up on the wall. That one might be good, the S90C. Uh, but the S95C is good if you want to have it on the stand and all the other stuff down below. And you don't want to have to connect everything up to the TV, the HDMIs, because, you know, that's just a display and the brains are below or somewhere else. So two different versions, one with the brains, separated and one with junk in the trunk. So you have to figure it out. And I believe that the Sony version is gonna be like the traditional OLED where it'll be you know, all in one piece. There will be no separate box for the Sony. So are they both coming in in the same sizes or are they gonna? Good question. I believe so. I believe the S90C is also gonna have a 77 inch. It's been kind of confusing. We haven't got a ton of information on that yet, but at CES they said, both TVs, all three sizes, just difference in how they're built. But again, that could change. I could be wrong. Um, so you guys will have to check. When they, when they put them on sale, you'll see. Either they'll Stay have tuned. it or they won't. <laughs> Currently, just the 77-inch S95C. But, you know, you could be watching this and all of them could be out. So you have to check it out yourself. Okay. Well, so since the TV is new this year, is there anything new or different about the remote? What do you think? Oh, yeah. The remote's a little different. It is a little bit smaller. It's a teeny little remote. I mean, I have been a fan of the Samsung remotes. We had that KS8000 back in like 2017 before YouTube, before we did YouTube. Loved it. Hefty remote, Little, you know, for, for a smaller Samsung remote. This one, the solar cell remote with the solar cell in the back and having the USB-C, awesome. Love all that. But it's gotten a bit small. It is like pretty small in your hands, very light. And we've lost it in the couch and lost it in the bed sheets. It's kind of like getting lost, you know. So I think they've gone a little too far. They also don't have an input button on it any longer. And I know people have complained about that because now you're searching for how to get to the input to change it. And instead of, you know, remember how they used to have the pop-up screen when you hit the home button on the older uh, OS? I love that because you'd hit that pop-up button and it would bring up the inputs and all that. Now I have to hit a settings button, then find it. And I'm always hitting the home button on accident and it's taking me out of YouTube TV back to home. So yeah, it's a little bit different. I, you know, I've kind of programmed for that older style operating system. I always love when they had the pop-ups, but overall pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with the design of the TV in general. I really like it. Well, Brandon, tell me a little bit more about the operating system. Oh, yeah. So the operating system, in general, it's more or less the same as last year. I think it works better, though. It doesn't seem as slow. Last year, people complained that it was like very slow to move around. Even I did, I believe, in one of the uh, unboxings. But much quicker this year, more or less the same. I love that it has the Samsung TV Plus channels. Uh, you know, you can watch all the Gordon Ramsay yelling at people shows Baywatch. we want. Yeah, Baywatch. <laughs> It was used to be on there's good stuff and it has you know the ambient mode which is cool like behind us you can get all the different things it's not exactly the same as the samsung frame is it caesar it's not exactly the not same exactly but it's it's similar i don't know if i would leave a qd oled on all the time someone in the comments had asked me why that might be the case well it's an organic emitting technology so it has a shelf life to a degree and it may be thousands of hours but if you're going to have this on all the time, it makes people a little apprehensive about, you know, the life of the product. And so for us, I would just say this is very bright, just FYI, very bright TV. So bright. So we wouldn't leave this on in the bedroom all night because it's like you're not sure if it's like 6 a.m. or if it's midnight because the TV is so bright. So, um, you know, I don't know if I'd leave it on, but it's cool. And then it has another tab, which is the gaming tab. Great gaming features on the Samsung TVs. It even has an option this year to cloud game and connect up that way. So yeah, you know, tell me more about that because I was finishing up work when you guys were doing that with the boys. Yeah, so it was hit or miss. Now they like that they can connect to the ultimate pass and you can basically leave off from games that they're playing on the Xbox. So Jacoby was able to play, you know, Hello Neighbor, start right where he left off. But you can definitely tell that it's a little bit 
you know, glitchier, there's not as much bandwidth, so you're at the mercy of your internet speed. But Jacoby didn't mind it, Aiden didn't like it as much, playing the, the racing games, felt like he, when you're trying to do tricks, it was just so glitchy that you couldn't even play it. I think Eric had said it looks like it's not very playable either. So it just depends on how fast your internet is. To be fair, when you're cloud gaming directly off of the actual devices, they said it's a similar experience to a degree. So speed of internet, you know, all that kind of stuff. It gives you an option to say like how it was. And we said that it's a little bit slow, you know, game speed and all that. So hopefully it'll improve over time. Okay. Well, you know, I like my PS5. So did you guys give that a try? How did you yes. like the gaming on there? PS5 is awesome. If you're playing consoles or, you know, PC gaming, it's amazing. Most of the Samsungs this year have four HDMI ports that can game at 120 frames per second. 4K, so that's kind of the big ticket item. They have some things like variable refresh rate, VRR, and instant game mode, and all these things uh, that are awesome, you know. So, for the most part, really fun gaming experience to have the game bar with all the different metrics at the bottom so you can see what you're doing and at more settings that you can get into. But more or less, we were playing Rocket League, really fun game. Samsung QD OLEDs, really bright, vibrant gaming, a lot of fun. So, fantastic for that. Will it make me better at Rocket League? No. Okay, it's gone. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> User error. No, I'm just kidding. We're all pretty good at Rocket League. All right, and the last thing is the multi-view. We also like that. I used to love picture-in-picture. -picture. I'm not sure if anyone uses it, but having the ability to like watch a YouTube video and a basketball game or you know, even put up your phone on one side and, and watch something on the other side or a couple different sources, pretty cool. So I think that's a great feature. I'm glad that they have that on the operating system as well. Absolutely. Great for football. But we should talk about some of the content that we watch on this TV. And one of them is YouTube TV sports in SDR is what it's called, standard dynamic range, something that we watch a lot of. And I was checking out some of the draft stuff on NFL Live. And man, I have to tell you, very bright colors, very green football fields. And you know, like the jersey colors are amazing. And Sometimes it's like, is it too bright? Is it too vibrant? Can it get too bright or vibrant? I don't know. At 3 a.m. it can. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I watch Sports Center at night or I fall asleep with the TV on and it's like 6 a.m. in the room because you think, you know, it's, it's time to Sunny's wake up. up. Let's yeah, go. <laughs> but really it's just because the TV's so bright. So awesome and not so awesome if you want to sleep. But I thought it looked great, and overall, I'm pretty happy with all the different metrics. Upscaling pretty good. Not quite as good as some of the best Sony TVs. I, I hate to say that. You watch a lot of this like lower resolution content, and you really see the differences in the processing. But I have to say, it's very close. Didn't really notice much difference. And after a few days, I was pretty used to it. So there were a couple of comments on the site about low bandwidth content. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Is that different from last year? Uh, I'm not 100%. I, I feel like they still have a bit of an issue with the really low bandwidth content. We had it last year where it would be going fine and then all of a sudden it would kind of glitch and then it would catch up. And some of it's kind of like the pull down, how they pull down regular content into like 120 uh, hertz panel. And so you'd be like normal and then all of a sudden it kind of catches back up and then normal catches back up. And they have different de-blur and de-judder things on the TV for this. So you can kind of set the motion how you like it. But for some reason on the QD OLEDs from Samsung, it seems like I'm still not there. I'm still getting a little bit of that glitchiness where if it's a QLED from Samsung, I've always been fine being able to get the motion how I like it. And with the traditional OLEDs from Sony and LG, same thing. This is kind of a new thing for Samsung, and maybe it's just me and, and the few people that watch the really low bandwidth content like you know YouTube TV, but it just, it's still a little glitchy. I'm getting more used to it. When we're watching other content like cable or Blu-rays, I didn't seem to have any of the issues. So I think it's just kind of a combination of a few things, and I'm sure Samsung will eventually figure it out, but I don't think it's probably everyone's having the same issue, just the people that watch YouTube TV or maybe you know HBO Max or Netflix that have these sort of things. So besides all the comments about Caesar, the next was all the comments about Samsung doesn't have Dolby Vision. So talk to me about that, explain. Well, I don't think it's a big deal. Samsung has their own HDR10 and HDR10 Plus so they have HDR. Dolby Vision is a kind of, you know, HDR, high dynamic range. And it's preferred and a lot of studios are shooting movies in Dolby Vision all this. And it's just, Samsung has their own thing. It's sort of like the HD DVD versus Blu-ray where there's like two different formats and is one better than the other? I mean, of course, Blu-ray won out. So I think Dolby Vision eventually may win out in this or it's just gonna be the standard as it kind of is. But I don't notice it on Samsung TVs because 
A lot of Samsung TVs, whether they're QLEDs or now this QD OLED, are so bright and they have a lot of color and they're vivid and it's just like, I don't think it's something to get so caught up on because if you're gonna watch a movie in HDR, it always has Dolby Vision and it always has regular HDR. So it's not that big of a deal. And even on my Sony TVs or LG TVs, you know, the Dolby Vision looks great, HDR looks great. Most of the time, I cannot tell the difference. So I wouldn't get too hung up on that because HDR in general on this QD OLED looks awesome. Every type of movie, every type of content, even if you just go to like the YouTube channels and you watch HDR to have pixel level control where it's perfectly black around like a really lit up image. And this being like, you know, one and a half to two times brighter than last year makes for a, a great HDR experience. And with the solid speakers on the back and when you can hook it up to some nice sound systems and all that, it's fantastic. So it sounds like overall you like it. So is this our bedroom TV now? I think so. I don't know. I really like it. It's fantastic, but I think I'm like a lot of people that want to see this TV compared up against the Sony A95L, which is their 77-inch QD OLED, because I do like this. I like a lot of things about it. Bright, great for gaming. Couple little issues with the motion issues for YouTube TV. We do have a lot of Sony ecosystem stuff. So, you know, this TV doesn't have the speakers the sound comes out of, but the sound bar, especially the new Q990C, I think is, is what we saw at CES with this TV amazing and i'm sure people that like the samsung setups will love that but we have a, a sony soundbar we have some other kind of stuff and so i really want to get the one that has the sound comes out of the screen that sony one see how that compares to this and then again of course is the sony going to be better in general will it be brighter will it be better i think in general this will be better for gaming but we don't do a lot of gaming more for movies for us yeah. tv shows uh the upscaling is important to us so upscaling you know brightness to a degree and in the bedroom for us Really good to have that, you know, ambient mode where it can get really dark at night because that's one thing. We can't get this dark enough. So maybe that's a good thing for most people. White on the on the S95C, extremely bright, even when you're using the eco mode. So fantastic TV. At the price where it came out at $4,500, it's pretty expensive. Now, that's one good thing over the Sony is, you know, the price for the Samsung last year went down a lot more than the Sony did. So I think a lot of people will find that the Samsung QD OLEDs are going to be a better deal. Probably, you know, around Prime Day and toward Black Friday, you're going to get much better deals than currently. Kind of hard to justify for $4,500, but it's still a great TV. And the Sony's going to be at least $1,000 more, I would bet. And then you have some other things like the regular OLED TV in the 83 inch or the 77 inch and so you know lots of stuff to do so you can actually go to our website and check out the tv quiz where you can enter in some information how far away you sit if you're in a bright room or a dark room and what kind of content you watch and it'll pop out a couple different tvs that we would recommend for you and you can actually click on the links right there and buy them and by doing that you support the channel so definitely check out the website the links are in the description below take the tv quiz and see what tv's right for you yeah, so what do you think? Do you agree with Brandon? Should we wait and get the comparison between the Sony? Do you want to go bigger? What are you thinking? Let us know in the comments below. And smash the like button and subscribe and all that. And we will see you on the next video. Bye.